Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. This day we celebrate the memorial of St. Benedict Abbott. Let us in a moment of silence acknowledge that we are sinners and ask the merciful Father to pardon us and to forgive us our sins. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot Saint Benedict an outstanding master in the school of divine service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before love of you, we may hasten with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within each of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down. I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray, the more I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrong. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline, and cast my words behind you. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that you, that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that gives the right away, I will show the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, 
and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear people of God, we reflect on the cost of discipleship. I take that again. We reflect on the cost of discipleship. If you have never lost a friend as a Christian because of your faith, then you are not there yet. I will take it a step further. If you have not lost a family member because you have taken this Jesus thing too serious, then you are not there yet. Jesus, my dearly beloved, presents the cost of discipleship. And reflecting on this, a priest friend comes to mind. He was ordained in 2011 and his name is Ezekiel Suli Farouk. Ezekiel Suli Farouk. He was a Muslim. He was a Muslim who went to a Catholic school and one way or the other had his vocation to become a priest went to his family, his father, who is a very staunch Muslim, and told him he wanted to become a Catholic priest. He was taken out of the Catholic school. His father said, no way. You cannot become a Catholic priest. That is haram. Haram means that is an abomination. How can a Muslim not just becoming a a Christian, but also becoming a priest. That is an abomination. His father, my dearly beloved, will keep this boy in a room for days without food and without water. Was so hard on this boy. But this boy was determined that he wanted to become a priest. Come what may. He was maltreated. He was beaten. There were days he would go to church and come back and he was punished severely by his own father because he wanted to become a priest. Then he completed high school. Went to his father and said, this is the time, I want to go to the seminary. 
And the father said, let's make a deal. In Ghana, we go to the seminary right after high school. Not like America where you go to college before you go. No. In Ghana, right after high school, if you want to become a priest, you go to the seminary and your training will last for nine years. Now it's about nine years or ten years after high school. When he told his dad, this is the time. I'm now going to the major seminary, the seminary. The father said, let's make a deal. You go to the university first. You go to college first. After college, if you still want to become a priest, I will allow you. In his father's mind, he was thinking, at college, you will have all the freedom. And probably during the four-year college life, a beautiful girl will attract him and get him out of the seminary, this seminary idea, this priesthood idea. Ezekiel said, fine, I'll go to the university and come back. He enrolled in university for four years, finished college, graduated, got his certificate, came back home and said to his dad, dad, I am done with a part, with your part, with your part of the deal. Here is your certificate. Now I want to go and pursue my own. This boy started the seminary and in 2011 was ordained a Catholic priest. My dear beloved, that is the cost of discipleship. It is impossible, my dearly beloved, to declare your stand for Christ, your stand for the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and not be persecuted, and not face persecution, and not face attack. It is impossible. And it is the reason he said to his own apostles, I have come not to bring peace, but the sword. In Luke, he says, but division. A son, a man against his father. A daughter against her mother. A son-in-law against his father-in-law. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. My dear beloved, it is impossible to be on the side of Jesus and not face attacks. And not face persecution. If you have never faced any form of persecution, what it means is your Christian life is compromised. Don't be surprised to find your own Catholic persecuting you. Don't be surprised to find the person sitting on the same pew with you, telling you, you have taken this Jesus thing too serious. Yes, my dearly beloved, that is our calling. And Jesus says, if you do not take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. What does it mean to carry your cross? The cross, my dearly beloved, is I that is cancelled. Just write I and cancel that I. That is the cross. Everything that has to do with I, your desires, your will, your appetites, your feelings, you cancel all of that and replace it with the will of God. That is the cross. And he says, carry that daily. If anybody loves a father or a mother more than me, they are not worthy of me. Breaking family ties in order to serve the Lord. And that is what Ezekiel did. And now he is a Catholic priest. The cost of discipleship. In our world today, everywhere we go, as Catholics, we face attacks because we are on the side of Jesus and because we have declared a stance for the way of God, for the truth, and for the life. It is impossible to belong to light and darkness at the same time. You either have to be in darkness or you have to be in light. For us, my dearly beloved, we have declared a stance for the light and we want to be a light unto our world. It comes at a cost. It comes at a price. But let us hold on to our faith 
for in him is life. Shall we rise in prayer? For the Holy Father and all bishops and priests, may God continue to provide them the strength and courage to lead the faithful ever closer to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For world and local leaders, may God grant them wisdom, compassion, and prudence in enacting policies to protect the most vulnerable in our society, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer religious persecution or discrimination, may God give them courage and strength to persevere in hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community gathered here, may the Holy Spirit be our guide in spreading the gospel message to those we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the departed, especially for Nancy and her good man for whom we offer this Mass, may God grant them everlasting mercy and peace in his glorious presence. Let us pray to the Lord. For our personal and private intentions, let us pause in the silence of our hearts. And we ask our mother Mary to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal Father, all life and authority flow from you, and every good gift comes from you. Graciously hear and answer our prayers which we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly, Lord, upon these holy offerings, which we make in honor of Saint Benedict, and grant that, by following his example in seeking you, we may merit the gifts of unity in your service and of peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of church, Tudor Francis, our Pope, and William Johnson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Nancy Hunter Goodman, whom you've called her from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in each of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and reach in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold, Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of Saint Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful week. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.